we made the form for him. Remember we scraped this form down. We've got it looking pretty gall darn good right there. It might be just a tad long, but I think we're good. We're going to do a test run on him. Uh, see what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and get this form up in here. And I think it's going to turn out pretty darn good. We got a, we got us a nice fit right here. What we're going to do is we're going to get a, I got a needle and thread here. We're going to you use some uh, spider wire, something like that, to sew up with. We'll uh, double it over, whatever you want to do. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get a handful of clay here. Because remember the head, we took all that meat out of the head here. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we can, uh, when this form gets up in there, you just take this... Uh, Clay, put it on up in here. Just pack it on up in there. Make sure you can see that. Okay. Just keep packing it up there and see what happens. We can always smooth it out. If you get too much in there, we can always get rid of it. What we're doing is we're just going ahead and uh, we're going to put our form and see how it fits. And uh, it's going to do all right. But now we're just going to go ahead and get this ready to go here. You notice we got that baby right there. I'm going to cut this wire off right here. going to leave it in there, but I'm going to cut it off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this string ready here. We're going to go ahead and get this sewed up here. Now if you want you can put a layer of clay over this but uh, and if it was any other fish but a bass or a bluegill I might but you won't have any the shrinkage won't show any imperfections so uh, we're just gonna go ahead and start here in the back and get a couple of stitches going here Go ahead and just... Okay, now I'm going to turn this a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to go about the same distance over here. Let me see how I just kind of snug that up there a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up here. We're going to just keep working at it. Leave about an inch in between, I guess, will be good. That's a, it doesn't have to be tight stitches, but you just, all we're doing is really holding the hide on there. Uh, a lot of times, some fish hide is pretty god dang tough, and bass is one of them. You can, you can exert a little pressure on it. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm getting this back fin up over here where I want it. And be the same thing over here on this one. The, the, the anal fin here. What we gotta do is we gotta make sure that we got enough we can go ahead and pull that over. And same thing with this. We're gonna end up, but we don't want our form. We want to make the fish look a little bigger, but we don't want it to look odd. And this is one of those things where, like I say, you pickle something or tan it, it uh, a lot of times it'll shrink on you. And we're, we're going to end up okay here. We'll be able to move these fins a little. And
we're just going to go ahead and sew. Tell you what, that works pretty good. Just go ahead and just keep going. Make sure you don't pull your thing out. We'll have just enough thread. Okay. Let's see. Oop! We pulled out a little bit too tight. We don't want to do that too often. But we're going to have, go ahead and we're going to have enough thread here to to go ahead and finish up. I use a pretty big needle so I can get through there. But now we're going to end up going back through this way here. We'll go back to this bony part here. See if we can get something going there. Oh yeah, there we go. Now you see that we got this fish all sewed up. I'm going to make a knot here. I'm going to go ahead and get my thread through here. Oh, hang on a minute. We'll get through there. There we go. Sometimes you have to improvise with your knot tying. And that's what I'm doing here. Just go ahead and tie her off best you can. And there you go. We got our fish sewed up. Everything looking pretty darn good. Our fish looks good on top. We'll adjust this. Get rid of this clay. And you see how our fins are here. See that? We're doing pretty darn good here. You see how that turned out there? We got our we put our clay up here. Okay. You can smooth that clay out. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to get some uh, clay in the cheek patch area right here. Remember we put a hole in here? Now watch, you see I'm using my little finger to fill that out. See that? It works pretty good, doesn't it? Looks good. So we'll just keep adding some clay to it. And if you, you can overfill those too, but... You want to have some clay in there because you're going to get some shrinkage and pack her down in there. And now what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and fill this baby up right here. We've got to get her eye in there. This eye is a little, maybe a little big, so I'm going to go ahead and trim her up a little bit so I can get her in there. Let's see what we got here. This is an eye I used before. This is my fish. Sometimes I'll do different things. But anyway, your pupil of your eye. See here how oblong this is? Let's well, see if you can see that in the eye. The pupil is oblong. You want the, the small end of the pupil to go toward the front of the fish. And we're going to go ahead and get this baby in there. Go ahead and jam him in there to get where you want to go. And then, use a needle or a sharp object to pull that eye back out. We don't want that eye sunk clear down in there. We want that eye bulging a little bit. Then that's just what that's going to be. Is it's going to be bulging out a little. Because her eyes do bulge. you got to remember, you're going to have some shrinkage too. But I, what I want to do... I want the top part of this eye out further than the bottom part. Kind of like a straight up and down type deal. That's the way the, the fish look anyway to me. Like their like their eyes are are coming out the top a little bit and so. But anyway. Okay, now we're going to turn him over. I'm going to put some uh, clay in this cheek patch too, just to make it look good. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I do. Make that look good. Okay. We're going to turn this back over. 
Now you see this, this is going to be open mouth, open gill. So what we're going to do is we're going to open these gills up. And see these gills right here? I'm going to go ahead and cut some paper here. And I'm going to stick these in between the gills. That will help dry them up. Sometimes they're kind of hard to get out, but that's the way it goes. Uh, what I do is I put them in there like... Well, we'll leave the bottom one there. See that? Put a, put some cardboard behind each one. I oh, know I missed one there. There it is. There's, there we go. And then we'll do the same thing here. Right out here. And now what you do is you got this one here on you got the skin flap right here that covers the gill now what we want to do is we've got to have a piece of cardboard that will go over that because that skin flap looks a lot better on there so I cut a couple of curved pieces I'll show you here I got them cut and you'll see I'm going to put one right along this edge here, all the way down to the bottom of the gill here. And what I want to do is I want to see that skin, this, this piece of skin right here on the gill. That has got to be on there and dried. If it isn't, your gill isn't going to look right, right here. So what I do is I'm just going to go ahead and put this piece of skin, put this on there. Now, I use either paper clips or a stapler. Uh, the stapler allows me to work a little bit faster. Now, you see that? I've got that skin. I can just go ahead and staple right through that skin. I want to make sure that we get only that. Now, see that? We've got that stapled. We've got our gills, and what that's going to do is that's actually, when you put that in your gills there, that's going to hold your gills out in place. When we put the wire in the mouth here, I'll show you right here. We're going to measure this mouth up for wire. I want it about like, like he's really going after something. We'll get us a measurement here on this wire. Press her down. We've got the measurement right here. Cut her off with some tin snips or your side cutter. And then just go ahead and put that in your teeth on the top and bottom. That. That'll look good. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cart our fins. Get everything ready to go. What we got... Because I use this mesh type. I can get it at Walmart, places like that. And what this does, this allows the fin to breathe. Dry out. It dries out a lot quicker this way. Clean your, clean your fins off. Otherwise that stuff will stick to it. Like the little piece of the foam. We'll get those off of there. And now we've got this piece right here. Now spread that fin apart. Like, Put one underneath and one on the top. And just take your stapler, staple through there. See how it held that fin in place? And what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and do this one. Clean her off. We're going to go. I got some old staples in here I'm getting rid of. But anyway, this is a pretty good way to do it. Uh, we'll go ahead and spread this apart. Put this fin on. To spread her apart. That? Let me see if I can turn this. Spread it apart about. Kind of natural looking. Two staples are plenty. Okay, now we got that one done. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump down here and do these bottom fins. Just like this here. We get that spread out, both of them. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm getting these staples out of here. 
anyway this is a good way to do things it's uh, just like this spread that out these fins are nice fins once you get them spread out put your other one over the top to hold it in place and then put a couple staples in there you can go right through the fin just like that and that holds that right out there and we're going to do this one here let's see if I got a couple other small ones here here we go right here okay now what we're going to do is we're going to hold this up do the same thing spread this out hold it apart put the other one on the top and get yourself a staple or two in there and there you go we got that one done okay now we're going to go for the tail we got the tail now if your tail dries out wet it a little bit and uh, put a wrap up wet paper towel around it and it'll rehydrate in a pretty big hurry and what we do is start at the top and go ahead and just get that uh, a staple in that top part now stretch that fin apart and hold it I want to get down here just a hair there we go and on this one here put three staples in there okay now we're doing this back fin right here I like my fins to be showing like this kind of aggressive style so we're gonna go ahead and get that baby on there hold it apart while you're doing it that one doesn't do it. Let's see what we got here. Well, we're going to use two of them then. We'll go ahead and put one in here. Now, I'm going to hold that apart. And I'm going to put this other one. You can splice these things in here. Okay? There we go. Now we got that. Now we got this, this one right here. These back ones right here. These are a little bit more difficult to do. And a lot of times what you got to do is you get yourself a pin. And just go ahead and go. I'm going to try to work this backwards. But anyway, just go ahead and put it right in here. Put this fin forward. Watch yourself because you'll end up getting cut. And that will hold that forward. Just like that. Now another thing is on these fins like this. This fin here. We want this fin up a little bit. So we'll just go ahead and put the, a, a pin right through here. And that'll hold that fin just like that out from the body. You see that? These fins here, you can put a pin in here, down here if you want. And that'll hold those in place. Just We'll just go ahead and put a pin in there. And that'll hold those. Now if you want these fins to sit forward, put a pin behind them. And that's what I'm going to do here. These quilting pins are great. Just put one right behind here. Kind of tilt that fin forward. And just put your pin in. And that will hold that fin just a little bit forward like that. Or tilt it a little. And now I'm going to do the same on the top here. What I want to do is I want to bring that fin just a little bit this way. So we'll just go ahead and put that pin in there. And now this here we got to watch when it dries. We can go ahead and... Uh, That looks good. That is a good looking bass. See that? Now see that didn't take hardly any time at all to do this fish. Now this fish will dry up in a couple days. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this other bottom here. So if you look at this fish, it'll be, uh, you'll see both gills open. I'm going to get some stuff here ready for it. And some paper for the gills. But anyway doesn't take long once you get the idea of what you're doing and how to do it and not be afraid to tackle the job that's that's one of the key things don't be afraid to tackle a job I, I tackle things when you know get some experience under your belt first but don't be afraid I've tackled things that I probably you know I shouldn't have tackled and 
I did them, and I learned from them, but, you know, you can always do that. That's, you can always tackle things, and don't be afraid to do it. I didn't tackle a lot of things that weren't my own, though. I didn't want my customers to be mad at me. I didn't, I did a lot of stuff for people before I, I got paying customers. And I don't care what anybody says, you cannot charge as much for your work just starting out as a taxidermist that's been doing it for a while. Yeah, that doesn't even make sense when people say charge the going rate. If you're a, a beginner, you just can't do that. That's, you know, you can't make as much as a guy that was uh, has been doing it for that many years, you know. Uh, okay. going to dry up nice. I can tell he, right away he's going to be a good fish. It's going to turn out real nice. Put one more staple in here to hold that all together. Uh, you see that? That, that? that fish turned out nice, didn't it? I mean, look at that. We lost maybe one. We didn't even lose a scale on this fish. Not on the show side, which is good. Anyway, you can always adjust this back to... Uh, when this fish is drying, just go ahead and adjust this. Uh, I've got my pupil pointed forward. It's a little bit tilted high, but we're going to go ahead and rotate this a little. There we go. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just doing a single eye on this one because I... I want to use my other good eye for something else. A couple days we'll come back to this fish. We'll do the fins. We'll take the carding off. We'll mod podge them or, or get some uh, silicone. We'll back them. Get them looking good. And then we'll get on to the job of painting this fish. That fish turned out beautiful. Uh, I can tell right now it's going to be a good fish. A lot of people won't approve of the foam method I use, but that's the way it is. Another thing I'm going to do right now, cut up my card here. Is I want to make sure that this fish doesn't move a lot. I want to I'm going to go ahead and put some right here on both sides, okay? And what that'll do is that's going to hold that tail in place even better yet. I'll tell you what, folks, beautiful fish, uh, Jim Dandy work, uh, everybody did good. We'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to re recard this fin right here. For some reason, didn't take very good. Now, why, I don't know. I might have moved it or, or I might have hit it on something, but once you get these fins carded like that, you don't want to touch them too much because they'll go to heck on you in a hurry. And, uh, anyway, that's, uh, there we go. Now we got her. Anyway, that fish is going to dry up. I'm going to set it over here to dry. It's going to be beautiful. I'll tag it. It's my own, because it is. And, uh. We'll have that fish ready to go in a couple days to do the other work on it. And I'll get back with you when we get there, okay? Thanks a lot for watching. We we'll use staples. What I can do is you can pull these staples out and just go like this and it'll pull them out. Uh, if you're worried about tearing stuff, Get yourself a knife and just pry that staple out of there. You'll only leave a little hole in there and, and that'll fill in when we get ready to do this. So we get that out. We get the gill material out. It doesn't matter when you take them out. But we're just getting this stuff out of here. To... You can see this piece of paper up in here that we put in between the gills to dry them. Now We'll do the same thing on this side here. Just, just get under there and pull that loose, that staple loose. 
I know it's and you'll see that 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 created a nice crisp edge right along here and what you could do is if you can't get that just grab it with a needle nose and pull grab them and pull them out sometimes these things the gills are a little bit sticky just reach in there and pull those babies loose then start start working on the fins pull all your pins hold your bottom while you pull loose that'll keep them from tearing just kind of this is just one of those parts of the job that you just have to do get your pins out and uh, see how these come out real nice and easy just pull apart just like that and you can't even see the holes where the staples were and I started using this method oh, a while back I like it easy. It's easier to do than the paper clips because sometimes your uh, backing or your carding material is a little too thick in your paper and they slip and all that. So, anyway, we got all that done. Now, we want to back the fins. Now I'm going to show you how to do that. I've got some uh, fin backing paper here, it's kind of like tissue paper. You can use tissue paper, it's about the same thing. Uh, you can get that at the, any gift store or Walmart or order you pretty cheap out of one of the supply catalogs if you're putting in an order. What I do is I cut some pieces up that I think will fit the fin size. Like this one here. You can see that, that'll fit that pretty good. You can leave it over, you can, they'll overlap. We do the back sides of the fins first. Okay. What you do is you just go ahead and get some on there. Do the back side of your fin. Put a pretty liberal coat on there. Just go ahead and cover the whole back side of that fin. See that? And then lay your piece of material that you're going to use for backing on there. And just, just go ahead and get it down into the ridges and that. And that'll dry in no time. Well, it dries a lot quicker than the caulk if you use a latex suck or whatever. Don't use silicone. Use a latex because silicone you can't hardly paint over. So what we do is we use this right here. And see that? That'll, that'll dry up. You won't even see that through the fins. So we'll just keep going. Do the back side first. Just each fin. Just go ahead and put your put your material on. And then we'll come back and we'll cut off the extra. And see how that kind of that'll bond right to that. Hi right, Toby. If this is your first video with me, I got Toby the cat here helps me out all the time. So we're getting another one here on the back side of this fin. You can pat them in place with a, with your fingers or whatever, but the brush, you, you get down in the ridges and in the rays that way. And this stuff will dry up pretty good. Anyway, you see how that looks? You won't even see this after it's dry. So we're going to do, i got to get my, my Mod Podge here. And we're going to go ahead and do the back of this pectoral fin here. Get a pretty liberal coat on there. And let's see, we'll put this one right here. I've got a lot of different sizes here, but anyway. Just go ahead and put it on there. This really helps when you got split fins. Nothing worse than seeing. I fish a lot, and I see some fin rays on fish coming out of the water that are split a little bit. But this helps hide that. And we're just going to go ahead and keep... Go with the tail. There you go. And this is just to prevent damage while you're doing everything else with the fish. And now my next coat on here after this dries, I may give it one more coat of this. Or what I'm gonna or what I may do is I may put my uh, coat of uh let me just get rid of this extra thread here. I'll put a coat of uh 
put latex on it, caulk, and that really makes it tough. You can bend them and do it. It makes your fins very flexible. You see how I'm just kind of doing this to get the fins set up and get everything sticking real nice, and that'll help. There you go. You see that? That looks very nice. We'll do this back fin here. I've got one pin here I've got to bring out. Anyway. Then just take and lay that right along there. And there you go. You got your we got our fins all back right now. Okay. Yeah, well, now I'll show you what these look like when we come back and they're dry. What I also do here is I put a coat on this here to this main fin on the back and that'll help toughen that up. If you see any bubbles coming through, just take and brush them. There's not much there, so but that's that's the way it goes, and it'll look very nice when we when this dries. We'll trim these off, and then we'll put our latex caulk on there, and we'll have our fins done, and we'll be ready to go ahead and do some epoxy work around the eyes, fill in some spots. This one here isn't going to take a lot. Uh, we'll do the throat latch area here, and uh, this will be a very nice fish to get ready to paint. and they turn out nice what you do is uh, you go ahead and you cut around where you fin it you see that I mean just cut it so just kind of get it get it roughly where you want it now because we'll be trimming these up a little bit later too you see that got that trimmed up nice now on this fish here you see where she was rubbing her tail a little bit of the tail is out gone so we're gonna go do the rest of the tail first and then we're gonna make this a little bit more symmetrical we're just cutting here just rounding the edges for now so I'm just gonna round that off where I think that that would come up here Sometimes some of these fish are pretty wore off. So we're just doing these fins nice and slow, no hurry here. They dried up nice. This stuff dried up. Mod Podge dries up pretty good. Doesn't take a long time. Okay. Uh, we got this one here to do. Just go ahead and just go kind of easy on it. And just go ahead and... Anyway, we we cut off all the trim here on our backing material. Uh, if you use just pure silicone, you won't be able to uh, paint it without using a special primer. So it's easier to use this stuff and. We just put a dab of dab of it on each fin, and we just end up with this right here. And what this will do, as I was saying earlier, this will make the fins really flexible and tough. So now, what you want to do is, if if you want, go over to the other side and do this other side. Now, I mean, you might as well. You got everything ready to go and just go ahead and put a little dab on there. Doesn't take a lot, just a little dab. And then just go ahead and spread her out. That'll help. You getting it done two jobs at one time, I guess. But you ended up toughening up that fin. It'll be really nice and flexible. And 
can see that. It works really nice. There's no taxidermy can be a hassle if you make it a hassle, but enjoy what you're doing. There we go. We got our fender. I'll set that up. I'll set that up, and it'll dry. And we'll come back after this dries. We'll finish trimming those fins. Uh, but then what we'll do is after this dries, we'll get into here and we'll start doing the putty work around the eyes and the mouth and that. I'll show you how to get that done. Anyway, this bass has come along. It takes a couple more hours to dry this. But we'll be ready to go tomorrow. We'll get this guy out. We'll do the putty work. And then we'll paint him this week. And I'll show you how to do that. For just, I'm just taking a uh, toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and just cleaning up the loose stuff on him. Because when I seal it, I don't want any of this stuff to be sealed underneath. You see how it looks? It's a pretty nice bass. We got a few little issues with it. One of them is uh, when we were skinning it, we made a little hole right here, which happens, and right back here. But you see how these fins are flexible now? After we uh, went ahead and put the clear caulk, uh, caulk on it. Anyway, we can do give this another coat of caulk if we want. Latex acrylic. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Mix a two-part epoxy sculpt. This is called Magic Sculpt. And I know I'm going to need a little bit, so I take about half a golf ball size of, of one, the resin. This is really good stuff. You can't find it in stores. You, I get it through the taxidermy supply houses. This is Magic Sculpt, and they got epoxy sculpt. Two-party. And what you do is you just, this is a, you can use this thing. I use it for everything. I, I use it for my deer. When I do around the eyes to model it, I put it on there when I do the eyelids and that. Uh, use it a lot on fish because no matter what you do with fish, you end up with shrunken areas. And what we do is we knead this together. And uh, get it the same color. I got a I got a little dish of water here. What I do is I use that to smooth it out a little bit. Okay, what we're gonna do here is go after these areas like this here that need to be repaired. Right here, you can see it a little bit here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, use some of this epoxy sculpt. Go ahead and use a little water. Smooth it in really nice, okay? Blend the edges so they're smooth. Okay, you see that? And then I have a little bit right here under the right under this uh, back top pin here. And I'm gonna smooth that out. So the edges are kind of smooth. Now what we're going to do is, I got a neat little deal here that I can show you. Here, what I do is I make a, if you've seen some of my other videos, I'll go ahead and I'll make a, a scale detailer. And you bend your paper clip, straighten it out. And you got one, you just take them, bend over the end. I'll see if I can get this up close so you can see it. Just bend it over. Now that's a little scale. And then you got a bigger one. On the other end is bigger. So, got a bigger scale. This is my paper clip here I made. I got it bent here. This is the bigger scale. This is the smaller scale. We're going to use this bigger scale. And what you do is you just go right along here. And just go ahead and I'll, I'll make a couple scales here. What you want to do is make sure you go over and then overlap them just like scales. Okay. 
keep I'll keep doing this. You see how that, that kind of gives it a little texture? Then take a little water, smooth those down a little bit. So you can barely see them. And that way when they dry, a little of that water will dry out of there and you'll have that skin detail there. And we've got some shrinkage around the tail here also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up the tail. Then this is common. Uh, got a little bit right here. I like to have the tail so it's not, so it looks good. What the heck. Okay. Then we'll just fill this in. And this little scaler, the scale detailer I made, works really nice for this stuff. Just take a little water, smooth this out. You see that? Smooth this out right here. Now we're going to use the big one here a little bit. We'll go ahead and uh, start at the back here. We'll just go ahead and go across here. We got the little one uh, out here now. I could, cut, I could start from either direction, it doesn't matter. Whatever's easiest. But go all the way to the edge. See that? And then just go ahead and go. Make sure you get to the edge. Okay. Okay, see that? What we're going to do is we're going to come over here. I'm going to try to get my fingers out of the way here. Get a paper towel and get them dried off a little bit. Okay, so you can see. You decide what you want to do is the best, however it works out for you. What you're doing is you're giving this some texture. The smooth smoothness doesn't look too good. I mean, you can use it, but when you got something as easy as this, there's no sense in using it keeping it smooth. And I'll show you. You can buy a fancy scale detailer, but I don't know. I just thought of this. I don't know if anybody else ever thought of it, but just something I thought would work good. I, I was using a wire, bend wire at the time, and I got to looking at this. and Seem to work out pretty good. Overlap a little bit there, you know. Just like the scales are. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I'm going to flip this over and go to the bigger scale. See how that works. We're going to get just a little bigger because they're, they're small at the tail a little bigger up here you see that now we're right back into this other area that we did we're just gonna make sure that when we go over this with water that we got a little detail left okay Take a little water. See that's kind of rough right now. Go ahead and smooth that out a little. And now when you get ready to paint, if it looks like it's got too much detail, go ahead and cover, a, put a layer of Mod Podge over it before you paint and that'll hide a little bit of the detail. The depth of the scales anyway. I'm just going to put a couple little marks right here at the back end. Okay. Now we got that part of the scale detail done on that. Now what we're going to do, we're going to work forward on this fish. I want to get the, the 
vent or the anus or whatever you want to call her built. So, and it always shrinks up. So you can see it right here. What I do is I build yourself a little puffy area there. Because they are, you look at the rear end of a fish, it's a little bit puffy. Kind of take a little water, blend your edges in. Okay. I'll just take something just to make a little bit of a like a slit there, you know. That'll look good. You see how that looks there? That's good. Okay, now we're going to keep moving forward. I'm going to do underneath the jaw here. See how that kind of shrunk up? What we'll do is we'll take and roll out a piece here. Go ahead and lay it right on. Take a little water. Now watch your fingers here because you can let them slip and you can get cut on a gill or anything here. We don't want that to happen. See, I'm going to go way back here, too, because uh, that shrank up. These are areas that there really isn't a lot you can do about, except for rebuild them. And you look at, when you go into a place, what the first thing I do is I look at mounts. If I go into a sporting goods store or whatever, I look at mounts right away. And see just where I'm at on par with other people. Okay, I got this jaw done. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this over a little bit. We're going to do the other jaw because you'll be able to see this other jaw from uh, the bottom. But you won't be able to see all the way back to here. So what we're doing is we're just going to go ahead and for the purpose of this demo, we're going to go all the way back. But you can just do half if you want. But You see how I'm just kind of filling that in. Take a little water. If you overlap, just take a tool of some kind and get it out of there. I use tools, for a lot of different tools for different things. I use one tool for a lot of jobs. But Okay, now, if you can see this lip area here, let me get a little more of this. What we want to do is we want to build this lip area up. It's really shrank. They got quite a bit of meat on that lip. Just go ahead and just keep filling up. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and smooth it out a little. Get a little water on there. Smooth it out. Okay, now... I'm going to show you something else here. Right here, along the lip, this shrinks up. What you want to do is get, get yourself a little bit of a roll. Let me get my... And put that right there. This is an area that a lot of people don't do either. And I think they may, if you're going to do a show mount, you better do it. It's, uh, anyway, that's kind of a fleshy area. Then we want to rebuild that fleshy area on both sides of the lip. See how it shrunk up here. We're going to go ahead and rebuild that. And that'll look much nicer much nicer. Uh, if you get something in there, just go ahead and brush it out. Just go ahead and take your finger, wet it down. Okay, now, as you can see, another important area is the throat latch area. Let me get some of this stuff made. You see right here, this is kind of a fleshy area under the jaw. So what I do is I'll go ahead and roll out a tube. 
I'll go all the way up in, connect it to the bottom lip right there. And make yourself a nice throat latch. Kind of fill that in because that's kind of a real fleshy area. You don't need fancy tools for that. I'll show you here what I got. It's uh, I've got different modeling tools that I use. Okay. And you can use different ones too, but we just go ahead and get this here so it looks decent. And now you see how we got this fleshy area built up right here. In here, nice fleshy area. What we want to do is we want to come over into this area right here because this is a fleshy area all the way across. Now, if it looks like, and, and you may end up with it someday where you got a lot of modeling to do there, you can run a wire across here and that'll save you some two-part epoxy is what it, because that way you won't have to waste it filling in and letting it get down to the bottom. It's going all the way down in. But what you do is you can wet your modeling tool. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I got plenty of this stuff here. I want to I want to make this look nice. So the shrunken areas, wherever you see shrunken areas, fill in. Model. This stuff is fairly cheap. I mean, you could buy it by the like this, big quantities or little quantities. I used to buy the little jars, but I use so much of it anymore that I go with the bigger quantities. And like I say, I use it for a lot of different things. You see that now? how that'll look if you're looking at this fish from the side right in through there now we can put a little on this side here too on the underneath side here but I, I just want it to I don't want it to shrink up any more than that okay well, we got that pretty good. We'll let that dry. Then we'll come back and check it tomorrow. But now what I want to do, I want to put a little bit here on this fin butt right here. Now you put some, I put some clay in there, I believe, when I filled. But it still shrank up because it's, it's a pretty good muscle in there. I'll go ahead and I'll do what I have to do here and that just gives it a fuller look now we got the eye to do here we're gonna put a little roll around the eye we don't have anything to do around the cheek patch because we did a good job of putting clay in there and if you do a good job of putting clay in there then you don't have to really do a lot of work around that You just take and blend that in. I usually try to get some all the way around just to, just because I like to. It blends in a lot better. Just take and go all the way around. And I'll just go ahead and I'll wet that down. And if it looks like I got too much on the eye, take and carve a little bit off of there. All it's wet. Now that looks pretty good. Now we'll do some on the other eye just to make it look nice. Nobody's going to see this other side very much because it's going to be up against the wall, but they might take a look at it. Sometimes they use two eyes, sometimes they don't. You can just fill this side in with clay if you want.
we even got pretty good fit over here on our we did a good job of putting our clay in this cheek patch too so it looks like now you'll see this area right here is about where the brain is we ended up getting a little bit of shrinkage around there so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill this in there's no scale detail here that you have to worry about okay you go ahead and run that right down to the top of the eye fill in the cracks and in the areas that look like you'll probably end up You see how I'm doing that? Got a little low spot right here too. I want to go ahead and get that. It's a nice job. Smooth everything out real nice. Okay, now. We've got an area right in here. I always do some work here. You know, right in here, this is a little fleshier, and this is a little fleshier. I mean, we got a little indentation there, but it's not like what they show. Okay? It's not like on a real fish, not that, that pronounced. But anyway, before I go too far on this, what I want to show you is... You got two nostrils here. You got one here and one here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you you have those there. Okay. And that way Especially if you're going to do a show fish, you want to make sure you have those nostrils showing. You're kind of a dead giveaway if you don't. It's one of those things that you should you just should do. Anyway, we've got the nostrils on that side. We'll get the nostrils on this side. Even though we don't need them, but we got them. Widen them out there, widen them out here. <laughs> okay. Now, we got this thing whipped for as far as modeling down. We got the lips done. I can't see anything here that we need to do. Cheek patch looks good. This stuff looks good. I might go over everything with a little bit of water. Throat latch looks good. Sometimes right in this seam right here, you got to make sure you smooth this out good to blend in. Okay, we got this uh, the anal area. Now I sat that down on there, so we're going to go ahead and make a new a new one. That's good. We'll wet that down a little bit. We got all this done. We got the modeling done on this, except for the tongue. Now this is an open mouth. You go ahead and you rebuild your tongue. Use your mouth, your, your epoxy sculpt or whatever magic sculpt. Make your tongue about the same way. You inject that tongue with a little bit of uh, injection fluid, preservative. It kind of saves you a little trouble with. Uh, flies and things like that. Just round your tongue off a little bit. And that way you end up with a tongue. We got everything else done. We'll let him set aside. I'm going to put the tag inside his mouth. And uh, we'll let him set up overnight. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what we do. We're going to seal him up. Get him ready for paint. Okay, thanks for watching.